We gotta try. <laughs> you gotta try. I can't. I'm really bad with accents. Lady Bridgerton. I think the only thing I can say is Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry that was pretty. Uh, Harry pa- pa- Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's oh, so good. I'm not good with accents. Um, oh, what else? Well, I can only say lines from Harry Potter. Have <laughs> it go. Um. Ron. <laughs> He's going to sacrifice his. No, there must be another way. <laughs> I remember one of my kids uh-huh. um, was like, "Hey, can I go get a um, a bottle of water?" Oh, I'm sorry. Bottle of water. I was like, "What?" <laughs> Why did you have to fix it. It was fine the first time. It's like, no, actually, I needed to impress no, you. A bottle of water. Thank you. Bottle water. Ba- bottle water. Yeah. Yeah. I can only say water. Water. That's it. Well, well, take take me back to Regency dresses and debutantes and the mamas. And the take mamas. Take me back. Take me the back. The annoying mamas. Oh, my gosh. I've been so, waiting. You've been waiting for this? Don't you hear it? Don't you hear the Ariana Grande music played instrumental version? I can't wait We're for that. back. Back. So it's kind of cute because yeah. we were going to start our podcast mm-hmm. with Julia Quinn's book The Duke and I. The Duke and I, yes. But shit happened. I think the universe knew that we were not <laughs> supposed to start with that one. And yeah. so it wasn't our first published episode, but it was the one that we had filmed. First filmed. Yeah, but then it got corrupted, so we had to do it like three times. Oh my god, that was cursed. Mhm. But Julia Quinn, she's known for her Bridgerton series. And most people know Bridgerton because of the Netflix series. Mm -hmm. But these books have been loved for like a minute, like a while. Loved? Yeah. Like how how can you look at the Mona Lisa and not cry? Same with the Bridgerton books. Mm, Welcome to a discussion of the Bible, (laughs) (laughs) of God's work, God's plan written in words. Okay. By Julia Quinn. By Julia Quinn. Julie Q. No. So this one is titled Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is actually not supposed to be the third one. No. They totally skipped Benedict. Honestly, who the fuck is Benedict? The artsy brother. Mm. Don't be rude. Mm, no. Wait, did you oh, even yeah. finish the Netflix show? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. I did, but I never watched the Queen Charlotte one. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one either. I heard it was yeah. really sad. I heard so, too. And I don't really want to see that. Me neither. Because I've heard some things that it shows, and I'm not comfortable watching it. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. But do you think going back to the Regency era is going to fix your life? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome to the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Shelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. And like we said, we are visiting an old friend. Welcome to the Bridgertons. The Bridgertons, <laughs> yes. This is the fourth book, I believe, mm-hmm. of this series. The series basically follows a whole family, the Bridgertons, and them finding love and this one is romancing mr bridgerton which is between colin bridgerton and penelope featherington Mm -hmm. okay first of all how do you feel reading a regency following a plus size queen which i know the actress doesn't like to be called that i know there's (laughs) there's she came out and said that she doesn't like to be praised or uh, I don't know if praise was the word she said or just like she doesn't want to be a mentioned as that as that. Right. Like that's not like w- she wants to be liked, but not liked because she's plus size. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And this book made it known that she was plus size, too, mm-hmm. based on. Oh, my God. The Stones. fucking line what? <laughs> that there was a line near the end that was like Penelope was so nervous. She skipped breakfast, which was so unlike her. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> All right. I totally forgot about that. I thought you were going to mention how every time they talk about it, it's like, oh, I was like 10 stones heavy. And it's like, what the? I've never heard. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, her? She said that? Like, they would just talk about her weight. And it's like, yeah, when I weighed 10 stones. It's like, how heavy? What how heavy? stones are you talking about? How big about? are these stones? I know. I just remember there was like a couple other lines that would mention her weight. Or her eating. Or Yeah, or her eating. I okay here's the thing here's the thing I don't mind 
Or actually, I, I am happy that there's a plus size love interest. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that it's not something that like is kind of done away with. Like if she were to bring up her weight, I didn't want the characters to be like, no, which some of them kind of did. Yeah. But, you know, I no, we still love you yeah, sort no, of thing. It's OK, though. It's all right. It's, it's not, not a big your t- fault. Right. That's my. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll talk about that later. But if the show is able to successfully do it, then good for it. Like, I hope it does it well. Mm. But like. I I hate. It's not her fault, but I hate that the actress is kind of trying to like, no, don't bring it up like that because she's doing the thing we hate, which is like you either bring attention to it positively or don't bring attention to it. But it feels wrong not to bring attention to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, she's not the only actress who has mentioned that she doesn't like to be associated as just like a plus sized actress there was the other one from euphoria right yes yes i do remember that okay Um, i was kind of nervous i was like wait i think i think it was her the one with the short hair Mm -hmm. i I get it but it's kind of like no i get it because i wouldn't want to be like oh we're gonna put you in this only because you're plus size Mm -hmm. it's like oh well well that's great i guess thanks Mm -hmm. i just wish that she would take it in stride but yeah it's not something you can ask of someone you know. But you know, there's some things that I I I never really thought about. Hello. Okay. There's some things that I never really thought about. Like for example, I I follow this. Um, I follow a couple of other like people online, and, and and not just them being plus size, but also like let's say that they have a lot of like acne scars. Yeah. It could, one or the other. It's because I've seen like this being said by two different people where when somebody comments, oh, Oh, you're you're so brave. I could never wear that or I could never do that. It's like, I guess when we were younger, comments like that, I didn't realize how backhanded they were. Not that I not that I would say them, but I would have it be said to me. You know what I mean? Dude, I remember when I would get comments that were like oh my god dot 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 i can't believe it dot 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 you're so beautiful and it's like why did you make it sound like you were about to say something bad yeah like sometimes i feel like people think that sounds nice because it's like no you totally misread it and it's like but you know what you're doing Mm -hmm. you're like framing it as if it's about to be an insult because you know other people would insult yeah that seems so wrong but like you're different and you're better because you didn't insult me but you did think about it though you know what i mean yeah i know exactly what you're talking about so i i completely understand the actresses who don't want to be just known as this one thing Mm -hmm. but i kind of agree with you that it, it kind of feels wrong not to not saying that we're, we should just talk about your weight, you know, yeah. at least like acknowledge like you are someone who is loved mm-hmm. and you're plus size. I don't know. And there's I'm not no really sure how the best way would be. There's no point in like erasing it because there's so many different body types. Mm-hmm. And I feel like right now with acting and celebrities everyone's trying to go for the same body type Mm -hmm. and that wasn't the case when we were younger there were like all different types of actors but now it feels like there's some sort of like some a quality that they're looking for in actors in all of them i feel like when we were younger it was like like skinny like thick no not thick sorry like like a stick you know what i mean like where does that one look heroin chic where it's oh like your, your your cheeks are like sunken yes. in. I mean, I guess that's kind of coming back again. But you know what I mean? Like when we were younger, yeah. I remember looking at models and actresses and being like, well, how the heck are her cheekbones doing that? I do want to I do want to fix what I said. I agree with you. That was really big when we were younger. Mm-hmm. But back then, like different faces, everyone had a different face. But I feel mm-hmm. like now pe- because surgery is so easily accessible for like aesthetic Mm. reasons which nothing wrong with it but it feels like all celebrities are kind of looking the same Mm -hmm. because everybody wants like the how do i say it it's like the more like sunken in cheeks they're getting what is that a buccal buccal removal what's that it's like when when you have like a round face they like take off from your cheeks oh my gosh so you do that it looks more sunken in i guess Mm. um would you ever no i don't think i would either i feel like i I would be sad afterwards i mean sometimes don't get me wrong i look at my face and i'm like wow that's a round face 
But then I think about like celebrities that I really like. And, you know, like Selena Gomez has a really round face and I think she's beautiful. Yeah. And there's other like there's that one actress who was in The Boys on Amazon Prime. Yes. And I think she, I don't know if she did. I'm, I have no idea. But her face looks doesn't look around anymore. I don't know. Maybe she just grew. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Because even this is such a weird comparison. But even if I were to like cut my hair, mm-hmm. I get sad and regret it after for a bit. Yeah. And that's such a small change. So if I were to do like a a change to my face, I don't think I'd be able to recover from that. Really? Because I feel I like I would miss something. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it would be uncanny when I look in the mirror like something's up there. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> but get what you mean. I don't know. Nothing wrong with surgery, though. But to do talk, whatever makes you happy. To talk about this plus size story, because mm-hmm. that th- it is kind of what they're going for. Mm-hmm. And um, I wouldn't mention it if it weren't for the fact that Julia Quinn mentions it a lot in the mm-hmm. book. But we are following Penelope Featherington, which, by the way, there's going to be spoilers from books one through three and book four. So if you have not seen or read Bridgerton, maybe go watch it. Mm-hmm. Maybe go read it. Listen to our first episode, but just take into account that was the first ever episode we know <laughs> so we it's weren't a, giving bangers back then it's a bit <laughs> flawed sorry about that um i just think it's so funny how different the book is from the show it's like it's the same but it's not mm-hmm. and i when i was reading uh romancing mr bridgerton i just couldn't help but think to myself how the hell did someone read this and just go Oh, fucking masterpiece. But you know what would be better? More drama. (laughs) More flair. More drama. (laughs) Dude, I just... But the thing is, I will say, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get that why someone would read this and be like, I want this to be my whole life. Because Julia Quinn has a really... Compliment. (laughs) I want to compliment her. Wow. Um, She has a really good way of writing funny dialogue. Okay. I thought she was pretty funny because hmm. I the book starts off with like, oh, the first time I met the love of my life, his breath literally was taken away mm. by me because <laughs> he fucking fell off a fucking horse. Yeah. And it, it's like, it's a silly thing, but then it just doesn't stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the jokes just keep going. Like there was like this whole, because Penelope and Colin, just to give a little bit of preface, they've been friends ever since she, her was- bonnet flew off of her head she was about 16 i think yeah i don't remember he was was early he was early 20s i think and she was with eloise and colin showed up on his horse or something and then her bonnet flew off because of the wind and it hit him on the face and he was really like chill about it he kind of made a joke about it and that's why she fell in love with him because she thought wow he is so kind, so charming, so beautiful. Wow. Want to marry that man. And then the year after um, when she started, because they do seasons when they kind of like promote girls to get married. When they're ready to be married, you know, so and the mamas have- are just like, this is my daughter. She can cook. She can clean. She can color. She can play the piano. <laughs> but um, they will do that. And her first year, which is a year after that, her Colin always, let me say that again. Colin always makes sure to dance with her or to like look like he's courting her because um, Miss Bridgerton, Violet Bridgerton, which is the mom, always kind of feels bad that no one ever wants to take her out to dance. Um, yeah. I feel so bad for Penelope because through the book, she's very just like ignored. She's definitely a wallflower, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, you're here, Pen? I didn't even see you. And it's kind of like a like a joke or yeah. I don't know, just kind of just like a thing where people don't notice that Penelope is there. So when they're in a group and she says something, if mm-hmm. ever she says something, the person next to her will be like, oh, I didn't even see you there. Hey. And then she'll say something to add to the conversation and they'll just pretend that it wasn't. Yeah, like they'll just ignore her again. So it's like a whole thing, right? So I think that Colin felt bad for her. And so he would dance with her during these seasons. But he had no interest in getting married. I do want to mention, too, that Penelope Featherington's mom, Uh Portia Featherington. Yeah. Love that they're all named after cars that don't exist yet. But (laughs) um, Portia um, would often dress Penelope in the ugliest ass dresses if you've mm. seen the season it's like so 
It's older than Regency, mm-hmm. but it's because her mom is like, you want to get married? Wear yellow because yellow is such a happy color. Yeah. But it would not flatter her at all. Just to make her stand out. Yep. Um, hold on. I lost my train of thought. It's okay. I'm sorry. So Colin didn't want to get married, right? And he's he's very much like that brother, that Bridgerton brother that loves to travel, isn't really like wa- looking to be tied down. Yep. But I think when he sees his brothers and Daphne, his sister, being in happy relationships, I think he starts to feel oh, like, wow. yeah, or what the hell am I made for? You know, what mm-hmm. what am I here? What's my next purpose? He's not really happy anymore just traveling. Yep. And I don't remember exactly when, but I remember, didn't he have a conversation with his brothers where they were kind of like telling him, hey, why don't you just court Penelope for real? Well, it's because I think it was by the second year. No, Mm -hmm. the first year. It was before Lady Whistledown was a thing. Lady Whistledown, society papers, Mm -hmm. was a thing. Mm -hmm. So um, apparently Violet Bridgerton, which is the mom, kept telling Colin like, well, you know, you dance with her all the time what if penelope what if that's one and she kept insisting it and i think the brothers were kind of like teasing him about it Mm -hmm. as penelope was walking out of the bridgerton house to go home Mm -hmm. and you just hear colin say i would never court penelope her never and then (laughs) he kind of made it like a point and also they did show that in the first season of of the bridgerton tv show where he was telling his friends, I don't think it was his, his brothers, I don't think, where he was like, Penelope and me, it's never going to happen. And then Penelope, with all the bravery of a queen, is like, I never asked you to court me. Yeah. I never asked you to marry me. Mm-hmm. And he, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And it's like, no, nothing to apologize for because there were no feelings tied to it. And she started leaving and all the brothers were like, oh, you, do you need to walk home? Do you need to? And do like, you have no. your chaperone? But since Anthony's the oldest, it was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Anthony. Mm-hmm. And Anthony was like, I am so sorry. Colin is not usually like that. And it's like, yeah, he didn't know he had an audience. But it's so fucked up. Yeah. Like, I hate this idea. Because no matter what Colin does after, there was still a moment where he was like, I need to make sure no one thinks I like like the bigger girl. Mm-hmm. Like, why were you so quick to just say no uh no 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 me and penelope yeah. never don't and even think about it in in a society where marriage is such a big thing mm-hmm. i would assume that you getting along with a girl and not really getting along with anyone else you would be like oh i never really considered it yeah i've only ever seen her as a friend but. well i feel like the pressures of getting married is more so on women and on guys like anthony where it's he's like the head of the household yeah I think that's really when it really matters, I guess. Because nobody was telling Colin, oh, you're 33 now. You mm. not, no, he was, what, 38? Because they were, like, 10 years apart or something? No, he was 38, 33. He was? Okay. We're like, oh, you're 33 now. Time to settle down. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody said anything to him about that. And don't you just fucking hate that moment when he was like, oh, let, let me not go too far. So... He comes back from a trip, right? Well, well, uh, Penelope and Anthony, when they're walking, Penelope's the one that suggests, like, maybe he should travel. He needs to get out mm-hmm. and, like, experience the world if, if he's too complacent here and doesn't want to get married. And Anthony's like, you know what? That's a really good idea. So Colin leaves to travel. Mm-hmm. And just for everyone to know, um, Lady Whistledown is uh, an... How do you say that word? A, a liar? A liar? Go- gossip columnist and it's an alias. Alias. There we go. And it is Penelope who writes shit about all the people in the society. But you know what's interesting to think about? Mm-hmm. When these books came out, you don't know it's Penelope. Like no. you don't actually know it's Penelope. That's crazy to me. I wish. In the show, they revealed it like right away. I wish they wouldn't have. Yeah. Because I think it's more interesting seeing how Colin figures it out or uh Mm -hmm. catches her i guess in the act we wouldn't have known right off the bat right no there was like no way for us to know there was nothing really that would i wish place her as lady whistledown why did they do that more drama more drama and i think that they just wanted to cause drama between her and eloise which is the best friend don't even get me started on and and um 
Colin's little sister. Yep. So you're right. Colin goes away for a long time. That's when Lady Whistledown is over here talking to her shit, but always calling Colin a charmer. Uh, I just what thought a charmer. I thought it was so cringy though. I was like, "Damn, girl, you're making it too fucking obvious." That Fuck all these other people. But, but Colin, Colin? there's Fuck something up. about him. Me as Penelope. Oh shit, I can't backspace. Lady Whistledown. I know. Like, it's just like one like strike through. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny though because then Colin shows up again, right? Mm-hmm. And what the? Why is our battery always like depleted by I one? Know. Um, Colin shows up again. Yes. And they're at like a little party, whatever. Yeah. You know, fucking it up, twerking on the walls and shit. <laughs> Penelope just twerking. And I think Penelope was eating like a pastry. Yeah. And then it just like fell on the ground. The cannoli. So the cream in the middle fell. How embarrassing. <laughs> oh, how droll. I know. So funny. And <laughs> then Colin sees her and I think he like pokes fun at her for it. Right. It's like, well, I mean, you can hide it on in my mom's plant if you want. Yeah. Oh, well, also, I want to mention the reason she's eating, because women back then would never dare to eat during these parties mm. because you're supposed to be out there fucking it up. Not but, actually. but <laughs> <laughs> I know. But the reason she's not dancing anymore is because she's 20 of eight. She's 28. And um, I hate it the way they said it. It's like eight of 20. Oh, eight of 20 and 30 of three. Mm hmm. No one says that. Do your math. Okay, so she's 28, and because she's 28, she no longer has to put herself out there for the marriage She's thing. She's considered a spinster now, which yeah. is like you're out of the age range for, I don't know, guys for, to, for guys to be like, wow, she's perfect. Yeah. Perfect time for babies and all that shit. But I hate it because even her mom is like, yeah, well, you get to stay with me for the rest of my life when I get old. She's like, thank God. Maybe this was her plan all along. She wanted someone to stay with her. That's so fucked up. That is so fucked up. I fucking hate that shit. But um, yeah. you're right. She drops her cannoli and Colin's like, get rid of it. Get Wait. You see that plant over there? Get rid of it, girl. Plant? Get the fuck rid of it. Put it under the plant. And I thought, she- it, was, I thought it was so fucking funny because <laughs> I don't know if you remember. There was a point in the book when, mm-hmm. when I don't know if it was Penelope or Colin. No, I think it was Colin. Where Colin says something like, you know, usually I'm very level-headed. Cut to every interaction they have. He just fucking loses his cool. Yeah, this bitch is always angry. I'm like. He's always. <laughs> but it's just it's just with her. It's like, know? I'm just it's so just, fucking passionate. Know. Get rid of that fucking cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> and she hides it. It's as if it's like if you visited my house. And you like dropped something and you hit it under my couch. Yeah, like if I <laughs> drop fuck? if I drop my Taco Bell and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna oh, just shit. drop it right here. Yeah, let me just. <laughs> <She won't laughs> it never happened. And she did that, and she was like, "Oh my, how that was? What's a word that means like crazy? Give me a good word. Give me a good word. That shit's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's so bonkers. <laughs> did they say that then? I actually have no idea. Yeah, that's she came up with it. <laughs> Lady Whistledown, Society Papers. <laughs> but um, it kind of starts off with them just being really close. Mm-hmm. And anytime you're in Colin's perspective, it's just like, yeah, you know, Penelope, I've never really noticed. She has kind of a glow to her. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. A little bit, because he <laughs> notices that she buys her own clothes now. Okay, but I just want to bring up yes. this fucking bitch. Go ahead, go ahead. So... Um, Penelope notices that she's not the only writer around here. She stumbles upon Colin's writings, I guess. Journals. There you go. Thank you. Journals. His man diaries. (laughs) His manly thoughts. Dear Colin. (laughs) Colin? Colin. (laughs) (laughs) And so she just starts looking through this shit and thinking to herself, wow, he's such a good writer i feel like i was there so his writings are about his travels yeah and he catches her that you know she went through his journals and he's pissed and she's just like oh my god i'm so sorry it's just that i was so captivated i was so into the story i felt like i was there i have to know like what happened i don't give a fuck can i tell you something anytime his writing came up i was like oh good i could skip a few pages yeah I don't want to know that you went to Ireland and tried climbing a mountain. Yeah, what the fuck do I care? It wasn't that Colin. Funny. And that's a real name. So, 
I I don't remember if it was this moment. Was it was it this moment when they were really close together and he was like, I guess I never noticed. No. Yeah. Well, this moment I do want to bring up because fun funny that um in Duke and I. Daphne got really hurt and it's like, don't move. Remember when she fell in that bush? Oh my she god. Got scratches. She got no. She got impaled by this fucking bush. Just a little, yeah. little scratch on her. Yeah. But um he was trying to grab his journal and there was a letter opener and I think he put his hand down, right? Mm -hmm. And it cut him. And he just wouldn't stop bleeding. He was like, This was my good hand. This is my writing hand. <laughs> How dare you? My and then, art. And then Penelope was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. And so she was holding pressure. And then he was just like, how? No, but he was like, because didn't he also mention like she went away, but I kind of didn't want her to. Mm -hmm. And I kind of knew that she didn't want to either. Mm -hmm. But then that's kind of it. His thoughts will always just end like, I never realized how good her skin looks. Mm -hmm. well, how much she I glows. Guess she has changed. Yeah. Yeah. There's like how moments. like how much has has time changed for her yeah as well as for him but yeah he's a little writer mm -hmm. and she like is the first person to ever praise his writing so anytime um she does he's just kind of looking for it it's like well what do you think about the first part <laughs> well, what do you think about when i when i said i climbed up the hill were you like there with me oh, don't tell me okay wait tell me anything <laughs> he, he like leaves it on a cliffhanger he's like did he survive i don't know i don't know <laughs> i don't know sure okay here's chapters two through ten go <laughs> Please edit. Thank you. But she's only really read that part. And um, he's already like super giddy. And then mm -hmm. he realizes to himself like, wow, I'm like seeking out Penelope Featherington's approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I would never. Cause bleh, I hate. Cause that's always what it felt like. Right. Mm -hmm. Where he was like me. Looking With Penelope. Her. And then even in his mind, he would go towards the like, well, you know, there's popular people and then there's Penelope. Yeah uh that was so sad well how'd you feel about the first time after i think it's after um he's read it she's walking over to the bridgerton house because she was invited for tea and they meet outside and she's dancing mm -hmm. and lady danbury which we didn't mention but she's like an old lady who kind of oversees the marriages so in the show they they i think they gave lady danbury's role to queen charlotte yes because Lady Danbury is someone that everybody just fucking fears. And so she has a lot of power mm -hmm. in this society. And this girl is just like, you know what? I'm fucking bored. Mm -hmm. All of these balls, they lead to nothing. I all don't even. All these balls, all of these bitches. I don't give a fuck anymore. And then she's like, isn't that right, guys? Aren't you guys bored? And they're like, yeah, queen. Yes, we're bored. I thought it was funny when it's like, yeah, so bored. No, yeah, I'm totally bored. And then Penelope was like, isn't it crazy that we're finding enjoyment out of saying we're bored? I know. And no one fucking says anything. And she's like, oh, no, chill. Okay. No, uh, yeah, Over. exactly. Anytime she speaks, it's like she didn't speak. But And so Lady Danbury basically says... You know what? A thousand pounds to whoever finds out who is Lady Whistledown. And it's a huge find. Like, it's yeah. a huge thing. And Penelope gets put on the spot. Like, who do you think it is? And she's like, Lady Danbury. Yeah. And that's like a huge thing to ta call out Lady Danbury. Mm -hmm. So Lady Danbury's like, I fucking like you. Mm -hmm. We're going to be good friends. Yeah. Like, she finds her funny, I guess. So go back to. But also, it's important to say that Colin is super sure that it's his sister eloise yes because he's like eloise she's a fucking chismosa she knows everything mm -hmm. so he thinks it's her so cut back to um it's the second big meeting between colin and Pel penelope the she's walking down the street going to house number five which is where most of the bridgertons live now since anthony took the big house fuck him <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's so interesting when they say, oh, Anthony and his wife, Kate, and their three children. They didn't stop. They didn't stop. And then Daphne and Simon and their two children, yeah. I think. Something like that. I think that's cute. Um, get a little bit of a snippet. So she's Penelope's walking down the street and she was like, I really told everyone Lady Danbury's Lady Whistledown. And Lady Danbury told me, you're that bitch. You know what? I am that bitch. And she started like dancing down the street. Uh-huh. And so then Colin sees her and is like, hey, are you dancing? And she was about to deny it. And she's like, you know what? No, I am dancing. Mm -hmm. And he puts out his hand to dance with her. 
and she has to be like we shouldn't do that because people are gonna think you're courting me mm-hmm. and he's like well what's wrong with that it's like well i if mean it doesn't work out everyone's gonna think you broke up with me and i can't handle that mm-hmm. like what that would do to my reputation and then he's just kind of like oh i mean He's just like, oh, well, I mean, it was just a, sing- a simple dance. Damn. What, no hug? <laughs> what, no fucking hug? <laughs> I thought we were friends, what? Penelope. What, no waltz? <laughs> <laughs> but, that was literally the energy. But then they have like, okay, let's start over. But then the second time they start over that conversation, they get in a fight. Yeah. Right? And mm-hmm. I don't even remember what the fight was about. It was about his writing? Um, Hold on, let me think. I just remember the time that he got really, really upset with her was when he caught her without a chaperone. It was that. It was then. Right? Because he, like, saw her get into a carriage that wasn't her family's carriage. He followed oh, her. Oh, no, no. That's, uh, that's a different one. Well, whatever. Let's just go. He followed her, and then he was like, girl, what? where the fuck are you going? Why are you here? Where is your chaperone? And he was just, like, yelling at her and just being like, girl, you can't just be I, around here you know by I yourself. Hated? It, it always painted him like that, but in his mind, because you know they're going to end up together. In his mind, he would always be like, why is it always with her? I can't control myself. Mm-hmm. My urges. Oh, God. Gross. But that, that conversation that they have, just any conversation that they have, really, it always ends with him going like, you know, you're you're going to regret this. Something's mm-hmm. gonna happen and you're gonna regret it. Yeah. And it's and she never says anything. I remember what argument you're thinking about. He got he, they got upset with each other. Because they didn't bring a, a maid to walk her. No, I was thinking about the time when he when he made a comment like, Oh, well, I mean you can do whatever you want and she was like, No, I literally can't. You can do whatever oh, you want, yeah. but I can't. You're right. You're a man. I'm a woman. Because he was complaining about his life too. And oh, she was like, yeah. You're literally a Bridgerton. And a man Julia uh, Quinn has made a series about you, bitch. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm Penelope fucking Featherington and I'm a spinster. Yes. You don't so. know what it's like to be put on a shelf already? Yeah, so that's why they were fighting. And he was kind of like, damn, I never thought about it like that. Can I tell you a big ick? A big Julia Quinn ick? What is that? Why is it that the only plus size romance in all nine of these fucking children, the other partner, so Colin, also has to like eating? Mm. Why does he also have to be someone who can eat a lot? Because doesn't it kind of feel... (laughs) Do you get what I mean? Or am, oh. I, is, am I just going crazy? Oh, okay. I, I didn't think about it like that. I but immediately I, thought about it. like Because it kind of felt like her going like, well, they already have so much in common. They eat a lot. They're just foodies together. They're foodies. You know? <laughs> no. They go through food adventures. It just felt weird because it felt like, oh my. It, it was like childish even. Because there was this one point, and I'm going to speed along because um, there's one point where Penelope's at home sleeping and it's like, Mr. Bridgerton is here for you. And she's like, oh, my fucking God, let me pin up my hair and do my do my do. And he comes and the whole time he's like, I got to tell you something. And I'm so angry. Where the fuck is the food? Where mm. the fuck is the food? And it's like, mm-hmm. calm down. Yeah. You don't have to. And they always talk Dude. about like they always have to take out 10 trays for him. It's like, bitch, you're oh, going gonna, gonna right. to go through a fucking potato famine. <laughs> and he's been to Ireland. So like you would fucking know. That's why it happened. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, girl, I've been through that. Okay, I don't want to go through that again. I I guess I didn't think about it. But you're right. There was a lot of moments where he was like starved. This man yeah. has not eaten in a month. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Julia did it so it could be like, oh, see, he eats a lot. Yes. It's normal. Yes. It's okay. No yes, big deal. I, I would not put it past her. Really? It feels like that. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be weird if like... This is like, this is even fucked up to say, but like if she enjoyed eating, I wish there would have been a moment where if someone called her out, he would have been like, no, I'm going to eat right there fucking with her. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. Yeah, that's all like showing like you're allowed to go for it. Uh huh. There's nothing wrong with what you're going to eat. Yeah. But exactly. instead, it's just like he eats even more than her. Yeah, that's that's my thing. OK, that was my ick. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I guess it didn't really hit me. I wonder if the show is going to do that because it doesn't feel right. They might. 
I don't know. They, they have a whole it eating well. contest. It would make sense. Oh my god, I would <laughs> fucking die. Everyone would die. Everyone would be like, "Oh, so only the plus size can do a eating contest." Mm, interesting. I don't know. You don't see fucking hyacinth like. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Hyacinth, I fucking love that girl. Yeah, she was she's funny. so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a point where he goes to visit Penelope and he's like, I got I got a confession to make, babe. And it's like, well, what's the confession? It's like, I think Lady Whistledown Society Papers is my sister Eloise. Mm-hmm. How do I know that? She's a fucking snitch. Ever since she was baby. Yeah. She's so chismosa. Well, they had already they had already talked about that. No, it was at that point. Because then when they bring it up, he says, I know, I don't know why I know this book really well. Because at this point, he's like, well, think about it. Like, if, if for some reason Lady Whistledown said that you and I kissed, like, people could have um, assumptions that maybe we slept together, but we didn't even kiss. Mm. And then all of a sudden, she's like, wait a minute, hot and bothered by you saying the K word. What if we did kiss? And he was, he like fucking short circuited. <laughs> And she well, was like, the way that she asks, hold on, I feel like you're taking over. Hold I'm on. sorry, I'm sorry. You I, wanna hold hands? Yeah. Doesn't she get quiet with him and she's like, she gets, it's because the thing about Julia Quinn is she makes everything super melodramatic. Yeah. So she just starts like spiraling and she's just like, wait, Colin, I'm 28 years old. I'm 28 years old. I've never been kissed. Can you please kiss me? Can you please like do me a big favor and just like kiss me? Because I don't want to die never having been kissed before. And then it gets quiet and he's just looking at her. And I think he literally says like, er, uh, uh, like I think he wrote it out. And I think in his thoughts, he was like, do her a favor. No, I, I, no, I kind of want thoughts, to. In his thoughts, he was like, that's the best fucking idea Penn has had. Mm-hmm. And then she immediately like, I'm sorry, I'm going to go. And then turns around and she's like, wait. Fuck that. No, I want to be kissed mm. because I, I don't want to live my, you know, like you said, I don't want to live the rest of my life like this. And he grabs her face and he, oh, I think it's at this part where he describes like, I've never noticed like how luscious her lips are. Like, I wonder what they would look like on my lips, how they would feel like on my skin, how they would look like on dot, dot, dot other parts of my body. So thank you for watching so, our episode. <laughs> what the fuck, Colin? That's kind of... He really just like flipped com- completely. Yeah. He went from, uh, Penelope, I would never, to, wait, she's so beautiful. So, wait, I've so, never noticed how pretty hey, bitch, she you're is. you're sexy. Where's my hug? <laughs> Where's my hug? Where's the waltz? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the two threes? Come on. I could not. I could not. I will say, though, when they kissed, I was like, fucking finally. 170 pages in and they fucking finally kissed. Mm-hmm. I, um, it, it fucking escalated very quickly. Yeah. Hella got they, turned on as soon as they kissed. Um, this boy has no. No chill. Weren't they inside of a carriage and then they started fucking arguing about something? I don't even, they're always fucking so fighting. The carriage one was because when he followed her. He figured out she was Lady Whistledown. Oh, I hated this part, though, because he... Lit- okay, yeah, he followed her. And she was, like, delivering, mm-hmm. you know, the cheese man. And he was like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And so he took the paper from her, and she was, like, begging him, like, please don't read that. Yep. Please give that back to me. Please. And, and he, he did. And he was like, you know what? No. And then he opened it, and he was like, what? You? Do you know what they're going to say about you? Do you know mm-hmm. what they're going to do to you when they find out all of this shit that you put, you said about everybody else? And I think she kind of mentions, like, you don't, it doesn't affect you, mm-hmm. you know? And then he grabs her face, but it does. But and all it of a sudden, does, Penelope. he's not angry, and, like, his fucking tongue is down her throat. Yeah, so they were fighting, and then they were making out. They were about to have sex in yeah. this carriage. Yeah, they were. It was kind of funny because they got to her house. And he was like, we're here. And she's like, do you think we could do a lap around <laughs> a lap around the block? No, she thought that she could sneak in, remember? And he was like, they're going to notice you. The way that you look right now, they're going to notice but you. But isn't this also the part where they're getting off and he was like, so you're marrying me, right? Yeah. Out of fucking nowhere. It's because he was so turned on and he was like, I got to sleep with her. And the only way for her to sleep with me, marry mm-hmm. me. And so he was like, we're getting married, right? And she was like, no fucking way. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. And he was ready. He said, I'm going to go in there, march right up to your mother and tell her 
I'm marrying this girl. How did you feel about that whole part with Portia? Portia was so fucking annoying. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's hard for me to believe that she is that dense because yep. Portia was convinced, convinced that her youngest, which was Felicity, was going to be marrying Colin, which Felicity was 12. Yeah, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And so when Colin and Penelope show up, th she's like trying to tell Penelope, Penelope, go get some tea for Colin. He's so while, hungry. Go get food. Yeah. This boy has not eaten in one hour. <laughs> while okay. Felicity stays right here with us. Mm -hmm. And Penelope's going to do it. But then Colin stops her and is just like, no, I actually I, I want Penelope here. Don't you have someone else to fetch the tea? And then when he finally admits, like, I want to marry your daughter and Felicity's like gone upstairs because Colin was able to send her away. Um, the mom is like, Felicity, come down here. You're getting married. She's like super excited. Like, no, Penelope. And then she says, like, Penelope. Who's Penelope? She, she says it with a question where like Penelope feels horrible. Like, she's like, why the fuck would my mom say that? Mm -hmm. You know, I understand where Penelope comes from with like at the end of the day, she's still my mom and I love her. But this book did a horrible way of showing any type of love between those two. Yeah. No, I agree because I don't I don't think there's anything redeeming about her. I wish that the mom would have figured out that Penelope had given all of her lady whistle down money to her. Because you remember the aunt passed away. And yeah. She just gave it all to her mom. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Never. She shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have. I hope the, the show does it better. Because honestly, I fucking hated that family so much. Felicity, valid. Everyone else, no. Yeah. I don't even... Wait, in this show, does she still have her siblings? I don't remember. She has two older ones. Felicity, I don't remember her. I don't either. But um, they go tell the Bridgertons. And Eloise is like happy. But she's like, you know, I just thought we were going to be spinsters together. but Forever. You remember but spinster sisters? <laughs> what happened to that plan? But... Even Eloise is kind of like acting weird because she's been having ink on her hands and I fucking knew where that was going. But I was like, mm -mm, no, I'm not going to read into it. But um, I'm, I'm going to speed along because fucking Penelope, she's getting married to a Bridgerton. Oh, my gosh. Lady Whistledown retired. But then all of a sudden. Well, the only reason she retired was because Colin forced her to retire. Yeah. Oh, and then remember how he said that Lady Danbury was like a thousand pounds yes. for you guys to unmask Lady Whistledown? Well, fucking Cressida, which I don't know if you remember Cressida. Tomley. I don't know if you remember her from the first season. You do? She was the blonde one mm -hmm. who I think was kind of mean. I don't really remember well, that much. Why are named after cars? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we should email Julia. Yeah. <laughs> um, Julia Convertible. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Julia C. Quinn. Go ahead. Cressida is like, it's me. I'm Lady Whistledown. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I'll take my thousand pounds. Thank you. But Lady Danbury, Penelope, and a bunch of other people are like, you're fucking dumb, though. Yeah. So, like, how would it be you? But I don't. OK, there, this is the, what I don't get. So Penelope has retired as Lady Whistledown. She's getting married to Colin. And Cressida says this thing. And she insults Cressida by saying, like, you know it's you're not very bright basically basically but then as lady whistledown she feels a need to respond and say like hey i'm lady whistledown so on the night of the engagement party well no she wants to respond and say i would hate if my year's work was ruined by being attached to cressida i am not her <laughs> but she said it in a way where she used an insult that penelope had said how would she have figured that out? Because the insult itself, I think it was like, it's a heartbreak. It's heartbreaking being compared to you. Mm -hmm. And I think she said the same thing. And then Penelope was like, oh my God, it's so obvious. It's like, no, anyone can say that. Mm -hmm. It's not something, it's not an unusual comment. I would understand if it was specific, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. Yeah. So I hate that Penelope was so quick to be like, no one will believe you. So you say that because Cressida went up to her and was mm -hmm. like, I know who you are and I know it because you wrote this and you said this, which, by the way, Colin found out that Penelope wanted to cleanse her name, I guess, and mm -hmm. not be associated with Cressida. And he was like disappointed in her. He was like, this is your way out. Like people yeah. can just associate little Lady Whistledown with Cressida. 
and not think anything badly about you now if if it ever were to come out that you're her so then um at this engagement party because colin well, is like Chris, cressida blackmails her yeah cressida's into like giving her ten thousand pounds or else she'll tell everyone mm-hmm. but so then penelope tells colin and colin is like i'm not angry but like kind of i fucking told you so yeah and (sighs) it was so annoying because then she tells him i think i can convince lady danbury to take the fall and basically say no it's me it's always been me yeah that she's lady whistle down and colin is just like no this is not gonna work Mm -hmm. and no matter what you do don't go to lady danbury and so then colin comes up with a very like it was supposed to be a huge plan, which honestly, this was the dumbest plan I've ever heard. No, seriously. Oh, by the way. There was no thought into this plan. Because, okay, let me remember how it goes. So he goes to visit all of his brothers and his sisters, and he goes mm-hmm. to Daphne and has this whole conversation with her like, how do you know when you're in love? How do you know when you found the one? And she's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> and he's like, well, <laughs> Okay. And yeah, it's because Colin and Daphne are the closest in age. Mm-hmm. So they're they're like the closest siblings. Yes. So then um he goes, tells all his brothers, well he tells Anthony and Simon, which is the duke from the duke and I. Shout out. Mm-hmm. Um tells them, "Hey, my my girl Penelope, she's Lady Whistledown." And Anthony thinks it's the funniest shit ever. It's like, "Damn. Good for her." And he asks them for their support. Mm-hmm. and so the day of the engagement party he goes up with penelope and is like look at my queen do a spin for us and she like you know is up there up there well but it was very dramatic the entire time before that because penelope doesn't know what the fuck is going on and all of the bridgertons are basically like keeping an eye on her mm-hmm. well the women they're just keeping an eye on her and none of them can tell her why and they don't even know why they're yeah. just like i don't know like colin wrote us this really scary note that said don't let don't leave her side the Stick entire her, like glue like glue and it, it emphasized glue i thought it was so funny that hyacinth like someone would do something and she's like that's not very glue like of you yeah you need to be glue or she was like oh, i really need to do this thing but then i wouldn't be sticking to you like glue <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny um so yeah he pulls her up and he's like this is my wife i mean i really hate that comment my girl. he made where he was like i think it was at this point where he said like you know, I would be out here more, but after this party, you know where we're going. And all the boys were like, woo! Uh, yeah. Okay, don't it's talk about gross. her like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then he's like, yeah, I want to, everyone to cheer for Penelope Featherington going to be Bridgerton. They all cheer. And I want to I wanna shout out her second name so you guys know how clever, smart, and witty my girl is. Lady Whistledown. And then it's quiet. And the first person to clap is Lady Danbury. Yeah. Oh, then it was funny because before he outed her, you just hear Cressida in the back like, no, <laughs> my 10,000 pounds. <laughs> so then Lady Danbury claps and then si- or Anthony claps because, you know, Colin asked him to. Mm-hmm. And then Simon claps and then all the Bridgertons clap and then everyone starts clapping. Wow. wow you're Lady you know what? <laughs> That's the beauty <laughs> of having a big ass family. Wait, Penn, say the thing, say the thing. Okay. Lady whistle down. Society papers. Ah! Look at her! <laughs> they clap harder. <laughs> I cannot. Mm, why? They like basically ran away after this. Right? Because they, they go into a room because he's like, she was like, we need to go now. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, right now right now wait i was kind of kidding okay and so they go into a room and (laughs) can i talk about their sex yes (laughs) it was so fucking embarrassing okay tell short embarrassing it did not seem like a good time at all well it's because okay first of all she's inexperienced i'm not i'm not talking about her Daphne was because she talked about touching herself before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, Queen knows what she's getting into. So what got me was there was one line where he rubbed her belly. I'm out. I'm out of the room. Honestly, if that were to happen to me, I'd disassociate 
But do you think that Julia Quinn is thinking, oh, this is love. Because he doesn't He's mind. He's rubbing her belly, showing <laughs> love. Hey, babe, I'm kind of hungry right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you got anything on you? Got any snacks in there? <laughs> oh, dude, if he, oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. I fucking can't. So he's like rubbing it all up. <laughs> and like he I fucking hate that he has like that. <laughs> Sit down. Be there. Open your leg. Like he was like so demanding. And it's like, shut the fuck up, Colin. I'm not fucking listening to you. Yeah. And she would listen because it's like because it's Colin. And I know he knows what's right. And then um, they talk about having sex in front of a mirror. Does that ever happen? Was that what it happened? What do you mean? Did they ever have sex in front of the mirror? Or did they just bring that up? I think they just brought it up. That's kind of funny. Because I don't remember reading that. I do. I remember him saying, like, next time I'm going to have you bend down and watch yourself. I remember that part, but I don't remember, like, it, it actually, actually happening. Yeah. Why did he bring it up then? Stay tuned. <laughs> it's probably gonna, it's probably going to happen in the show, though. Because yeah, there is a mirror is. scene. Yeah, I heard that they broke furniture when they, like, we're filming some of these scenes. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's going to go hard, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Penelope, are you okay? <laughs> Pen! <laughs> I fucking can't. Mm. Um, it was... Uh, but then what happened? They just have sex. Yeah, but then we find out that Eloise actually left before this big-ass reveal. Yeah. And it's not until, like, the epilogue where Eloise is getting married to some fucking stranger where... Yeah. Where, um... She, she finds out but it's because hyacinth told her so but eloise has been sending letters to some guy yeah hmm. the end do you know who that is philip philip yeah yeah a little bit oh, okay you know i'm not a quinn head but that's because he's in the show oh is he yeah oh i didn't even notice um okay i have a few thoughts okay go ahead i it feels weird to me reading a story where Colin was just like, if only I had seen it sooner. Because I understand friends to lovers. but I'm telling you, that's the trope <laughs> I fucking hate. I, I just never saw it before, I but now I see it. it. It wasn't you who changed. It was me. I, I can see clearly now. Like, I, the thing is, I never realized I hated this, but this is such a bad way to, like, show friends to lovers i wish he would have just had like a oh it's always been there you know and i wish she would have been courted by someone else that's what i wanted mm -hmm. i wanted her to have had another prospect yeah and then colin be like oh, wait hold on wait she's mine because that's <laughs> from what the trailers of the season three i kind of thought that's where it was going because mm. there's a, a fight that they have in the trailer where it's like you don't know what it's like to be a spinster and I thought it was her being like, I finally have a prospect and you're going to tell me not to marry him mm. after you didn't want to. Yeah. Like, I wish it was like that. I, I've been avoiding the trailers because I just want to go in blind. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I only saw the, the uh, I don't know if it was like a still or something of them looking into a mirror together. He was like behind her. That was the only thing I've seen so far. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. <laughs> Um, I just, it just makes me mad because he doesn't seem that great of a guy mm -hmm. if all he, like, really, the only thing he really wanted from her was sex the whole time. Yeah, that's why he wanted to marry her. And I feel like it's really sad to me because Colin realized that he didn't really have a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And I think he just got fixated on the idea of, oh, maybe marriage is my next like oh. step, you know? Do you remember that conversation they had where he was telling her that the only reason he didn't like talking about Lady Whistledown was because he was jealous of her? Oh, he had my nothing. God. Yes. And then she... Because he was like, I have nothing. You have your, your life work. I have nothing. Mm -hmm. And then she says, well, you have me. And he was like, you know, that's not the point. Yeah, I remember that. I'm I thought sorry. it was crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like that he was honest enough to tell her that he was yeah. feeling jealous. Like, that's a big step. But why are you feeling jealous? Like, you should be happy for her. And it was actually Penelope who would push him to publish his, his writings. Yep. And there's just something about her having to retire and him just like writing you know what i mean i don't know like there's something icky about that to me 
I wish that she would have continued for her or if she would have ended on her terms. Mm. There was that whole thing that she wrote a long time ago. It's like if Penelope gets married to a Bridgerton, that's the end of the world. Yeah, she did say that. Well, yeah. she wrote it as Lady Whistledown. And I think she wrote it because she knew that the possibility was really fucking low. Yeah. I um, I hated the whole food thing a lot. Yeah. But Julia has this thing where, like, when I'm reading it, I'm fucking digesting this shit. I'm like. Well, it's an, it's a really easy read. I'm eating that shit up. And then I get to the end and it's like, what did I eat? <laughs> What did I eat? She gave me a taco shell. There was nothing in there. <laughs> I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the show is going to do it better. Oh, but I for hope, sure. I really, really hope that they add another prospect for her. Like they did for Daphne. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. But that one for Daphne didn't seem like a an actual thing. Like you knew it the wasn't going to happen. Yeah. I wish it did. I that. want someone to look at Penelope and be like, hey. Hey, you're kind of hot. Kinda and Colin to be like, no, don't know. No, she's mine. <laughs> it's like, no, she's not. Mm-hmm. Wait, why am I not writing this? <laughs> 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 Julia, get a pen and paper. <laughs> I am so sad because I really wanted to love this book. Oh, that's what I wanted to bring up. You remember the Kate and Anthony story? At yes. the epilogue, it was them all playing, I think, pickleball or cricket or whatever. Yeah. And you see that Penelope and Colin are together, uh-huh. but they're being annoyingly lovey-dovey. Yeah. I thought everyone hated them. Like, when I read that, I was like, they seem annoying as fuck. Mm. So. I don't really remember the that epilogue. I do, because I, I remember feeling bad for them, because it was like, they're just loving each other. Mm-hmm. But you don't really see that. I wish he was more loving for her. Or loving to her in front of others. Mm-hmm. The only thing that was kind of cute was when Lady Danbury was like, oh, Penelope, you're lucky. And then he was like, no, it's me who's lucky. Yeah, that was cute. But I wish there would have been more of that. Yep. More of him realizing how lucky he is to have Penelope. And Penelope has always liked him. I wish Always been in said, love with him. I wish she would have said no to something once to him. Because mm-hmm. she never... She would argue with him, but she would never be against what he would do. And I think she even brought up, like, what am I going to do? Say no to yeah. him? I mean, it, it is sad to think about how women, like, had to get married at this time. Because then if not, then... You're a spinster. You're, yeah. How did you feel during the engagement party when the lady whistled down paper that was like, I'm not fucking Crescent a bitch, came out? And Colin was so angry that Penelope was too scared to look at him. Do you remember that? And then she was like, he was like, we're going to leave after he we was, dance. Because he was disappointed. Mm-hmm. And then she was like, oh, we're dancing, but, you know, I would think you'd be smiling. And he's like, yeah, I would think you'd smile too, huh? But you ruined this night. It's like, it's not that deep. I'm telling you, he's toxic. I, I wanted him to not be toxic. That's my thing. I wanted him to be better. Mm-hmm. And it makes me sad because he was the brother that I wanted to like the most. How many brothers are there? It's Anthony, Benedict, Colin, and George. Is that his name? Who the fuck is George? <laughs> the youngest? George? Is it I'm George? I'm making him up. <laughs> yeah, Hyacinth and little George. They call him LG. <laughs> Lil George. <laughs> yes, you is. You could be lying to me. I have no idea. Who's an F? Francesca. Francesca. Who the fuck is Francesca? <laughs> <laughs> She's out. She's out partying it up i think she is i think you're right george is. that sounds so basic compared <laughs> to all the other brothers especially highest i still think that out of everyone i don't know because anthony was a little better than colin um i think it's so funny because I, I just think back to how anthony was so fucking annoying yeah in book one and how he was better in the show i don't know if i liked him in the book though I can't remember. Mm. And then Colin, I feel like it's like forgettable yeah. in the first two seasons. But that's his whole character. He doesn't want to be forgettable. He just wants to munch. He just wants to munch. Oh, my God. <sighs> I don't know. I hate that they went out of order, though. I hate that his books at the end were successful. 
I ain't reading that shit. I know. Oh, but then at the end, wasn't she like, she was editing his work and yeah. then she told him, oh, I think I want to write something too. Called The Wallflower. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, how's it going to end, babe? It's like with a happy ending, of course. All because of you, babe. Bring in the fucking Ariana Grande, yes, and instrumental version. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Say that to your chest. <laughs> I... You know, I hate that Bridgerton is very loved because I don't really like these books. The I'm books sorry. are bad, but the show is interesting. The show is good. I yeah. love the second season. The second season, banger. <laughs> and I don't want to watch oh Queen my Charlotte. God. But I just, I don't know, because people are going to watch this and not read them, and they're not good. <laughs> they're not good. That's why I'm telling you, how the heck did um, these books like get read and then just like made better i don't know how to describe it because it's still kind of the same it is but not really well like the thing that's most hated is the fact that there are people of color in this and they don't bring up racism at all in the regency era mm. which i think is true like why no but, but the, then they but mentioned they it. did bring it up though they, in the first season no but they mentioned it as like i remember tough times and it's like no you don't mm. like no in this world you don't so why are you bringing it up as if it's a thing when it's not a thing mm-hmm I don't know. I think it I think it's supposed to be a thing that's just forgotten. Okay. I don't know. I really hope that we see a lot of furniture breaking in a good way. I don't know if we're going to talk three. about the Netflix show though cuz I don't think so either. Well, cuz this is like way before mm-hmm. when it comes out. But if we do talk about it, it'll be on our Patreon. I tell you one of one of the girls um one girl that I'm not super close to Uh, messaged me through instagram because i posted that i read it and she was like how are you reading it i was like this has been a book (laughs) yeah this has been a book (laughs) yeah for a long time now yeah i don't know it just makes me kind of like do people not like i don't know when things come out do people not look into it and see if it's originally a book i never did really when i was younger i never really looked into anything but we're not no i mean now (laughs) i guess not I usually do. Like, I'll see if it's adapted by something. Yeah. Makes sense now, but I guess not. It's not something people do. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you rate well, it? she's not missing much. Oh, gosh. You know, out of all of them. Five out of five. <laughs> don't lie. Out of all of them, I think I did actually enjoy this one for the humor. Yeah. And what it could have been. Oh, you're so sweet. But I just can't stand the whole. It's just the food thing that really gets me. I think I'm going to give this. <laughs> it just went lower. I think I'm going to give this a 2.6. Wow, that's high. Yeah. Because I did actually like it. Okay. It was fine. Um, No, I can't say the same. <laughs> I feel like I didn't laugh once. I would give oh. it like a 1.3 maybe. <gasps> that's half of what I said. Oh, my God. Maybe a 1. I can't believe it. 0.25. Mm-hmm. Because you can do that on Storygraph. Well, Lady Danbury said this was going to be the best season yet. Well, which she says about every fucking Bridgerton. <laughs> also, okay, can I say something? Can I say something controversial? If this show gets seven seasons for all the kids, isn't it weird that we're seeing the kids grow up and then we're going to see them in spice scenes? I think they would pick new actors. Do you think so? Yeah. Or are they going to keep Eloise? How old is Eloise? I don't think she's... I don't know, but I could see them keeping them. But that's weird, because I don't want to see them grow up and do that. I don't even want to read the Hyacinth story. That feels weird to, and wrong to me. <laughs> I don't know. It really gets me. <sighs> I guess. I don't Goes down to a two. I don't really <laughs> want to think about that. <laughs> I... Uh, I really don't want to think about that. Oh, I'm Julia. just hoping that they get all recasted. Do you think Simon will come back for season three? No. But he has to clap. I think he. <laughs> There's Simon in the back. Where? It's like it's the back y- of his y- head. Y- I, <laughs> you can hear him. Can't really see him though. Oh my god! I, I wish he would come back. You are only coming back for like one scene. The clap and for him to be like, that's. that's I'm my, on your side, bro. That's my brother. <laughs> I'm a Bridgerton. Too. That's my brother and that's my sister. <laughs> I'm the Duke of Hastings. Shut the fuck up, mm-hmm. dude. <laughs> I'm ready to let this book go, but I can see us reading the other ones very soon, and I'm scared. 
I... Are they going to read Benedict? Are they even going to do him? I think he might be next, maybe. Who knows? No, I think Eloise is next. Benedict's just not going to get married. I thought <laughs> Benedict was going to be gay. So did I. Do you think that they're going to play with that idea? I think so. Okay, I'm in again. <laughs> I'm in again. Because how is it that every kid is just going to end up in a marriage? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought Eloise was going to be gay. I wanted Eloise to not give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And if she wanted to be a spinster, let her be a spinster. Yeah. And but, maybe if she wanted to have a family, it would be like a found family, not a marriage and kid. But she did um, have a crush on that paper boy. I remember that. I think he was a paper boy. I'm not That's sure what he was. weird. That's not Eloise. Eloise wouldn't. She did, know. though. I hated that scene where Penelope was like, I'm getting married. And then Eloise like, I'm working on it. Like, what? Like, don't ask me about it. It's like, don't throw things like that at us. Mm-hmm. Th- no. <laughs> yeah. But then, I mean, I, I feel bad for her. Because hmm. now you're doing it by yourself. <laughs> I don't care. No, Eloise, do it for you. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm, p- I'm trying to put myself in the position of that era. And I feel like I would just be pressured. That's a lot I think of I would. Pressure. I don't know. I, I don't would know. not want to parade myself. <sighs> Me neither. I think I would cry. Oh, God. And, and right now, I'm 20 of 8. <laughs> so, like, I would be spinster age. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm. But if I had Ariana Grande instrumental music playing in the background, I think I could make it through. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about this book? Uh, no. I'm ready I th- to let I her go. Think, yeah, I think we've said enough. <laughs> well, thank you for everyone who's listening to us, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can please leave a rating of five stars, it literally takes two seconds and makes a huge difference. And give us a review recommending us our next read. That would be great. If you want to support us and you have a little bit of money, what can they do? So we do have a Patreon. And at the moment, it really just serves as a way for our listeners to let us know that you really enjoy our content i mean we do post twice a week that's a lot of books um you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix but if you don't want the commitment of monthly then you can find us on coffee which is ko-fi.com slash the book fix or buymeacoffee.com slash the book fix if you are watching us on youtube thank you so much if you can like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell because we post every tuesday and thursday if you want to support us on social media we do have an instagram and a threads at the book fix pod t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x-p-o-d and we also have a tiktok and a goodreads the book fix t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x thank you let's go ahead and find some reviews of this book um i will read the positive since i absolutely love this book this comes from book wonderland who gave it a five out of five Colin is my favorite Bridgerton since the first book, so I was really excited to read his book, and it was amazing. I also really love Penelope. She's my favorite heroine in this series. I was so happy she finally got the man of her dreams. Their story was adorable. Additionally, we find out who Lady Whistledown is. For a long time, I had no clue, but in this book, I had my suspicions. The author really chose the perfect person to be her. This made the story even better. Better. Anyway, I'm going to miss her in the next books. Sounds like she died. Oh, my God. (laughs) Rest in peace, Pen. (laughs) Okay, so this comes from Laura. They gave it one out of five, and this is kind of long. So they wrote, I'll never recommend this series to anybody. I had high hopes for book four, but again, it was such a disappointment. It's not a love story. It's a toxic relationship, just like the previous books. Colin has anger issues, just like Mm -hmm. Antony and Benedict. He is well known as the fun Bridgerton, and there are moments that I can't even recognize him That he can't even recognize himself because of his anger moments. He gets mad at Penelope basically the whole time. He gets mad because she has a secret. He gets mad because he didn't discover the secret. And then he gets mad because he's jealous of her. Numerous times he grabs Penelope by her shoulders or hands and he hurts her. At some point he even mentions that he is so furious that his wife could wake up the next day with a huge bruise. Also, Colin is happy when Penelope is scared about everyone discovering her secret because she should be scared about the talk that they will have alone after and what could happen during that talk. Everything is so terrible that I can't comprehend how everyone is giving such high ratings to this book. Penelope mentions during the story that she doesn't know how she could be in love during so many years with Colin when this guy that she was in love with didn't even exist. She didn't know that Colin was completely different. 
However, she still believes that he's gentle and kind because he shows that he cares about her sometimes. And that's enough to make the anger go, anger go away. That's extremely problematic, people. This isn't love. It's toxic. It's a toxic relationship where the girl thinks that the minimum is enough and that the guy just has some terrible moments. But most of the time, he's a nice guy. This book has no problem. Oh, wait, sorry. This book has absolutely no purpose. And it's horrifying to think that some younger people may read this and believe that love always has to be a little bit violent how could someone like this book how could anyone be okay with the story thank you so much for listening and we will talk to you next time bye, bye. i didn't even bring that out but i wanted to how do you feel about the fact of it was mentioned that you love someone a lot if they make you angry i think well, I don't remember exactly how it was said in the book, but I know that people think this way because you're having a reaction. Yeah. And if you have a reaction, that means you care. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that if you're angry at someone, especially all of the fucking time, is that really an environment you want to be in? Like, why would you want to be angry all the time? You know, I don't you think... you care a lot. It's, it's a horrible... It's a horrible way to... I don't put agree. it. I don't agree. I don't agree with the way that they played it out. It didn't make sense to me. But I don't agree because you're saying that him getting angry at her all the fucking time means he cares about her. I think he just wanted to control her. And I forgot about the bruise part. Oh, yeah. And then I forgot that he would always be grabbing her and she would be like, ow. I do remember him mentioning, like, sometimes I just want to grab my wife and shake her. Yeah. Like, what the oh, fuck? Yeah. yeah, he's fucking weird. They're talking about the Bridgertons on like a pedestal, but they're all kind of like this. Mm -hmm. There's something about, I guess, men being so fucking emotional that some people really love, but mm -hmm. it's like it's toxic, dangerous, and controlling. Mm -hmm. And I can't stand it. And I think that's why I don't like any of these books. Yeah. They I all understand. fucking suck. They do all suck. Um, well, hopefully, this is our last trip with Julia. <laughs> It probably isn't because I think uh, it is interesting to talk about, especially because of how ridiculous it is. Yeah. Like, okay, so in the first book, I remember that whole scene with Daphne falling into a bush and everyone being like, oh my God, is she okay? And then second the book, it the was bee. the, well, the bee stinging, yeah. well, about to sting Kate and Anthony freaking the fuck Are out. okay? And he puts his lips on her chest to suck the venom out. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the carriage scene. Which where like the one? carriage like flips and he's just like oh my god she's fucking dead in there oh yeah um <laughs> and in this one that. i don't remember exactly what the scene was but wasn't there a moment where he she almost trips and he like catches her and yes. he's like oh my god are you okay i could have lost you there you could have hit your head and never opened your eyes once again <sighs> and i just feel like all of these like damsel in distress moments and this guy being a fucking bitch and just like helping her one second doesn't erase all of the toxic shit that he put her through but that goes for all of the guys so yep. not just colin <sighs> okay let's let it go i can't talk about this anymore <laughs> <laughs>